I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily life living in Latin America. I had a lot of medical things going on over the last couple months, and it has kept us uh, kind of busy with a lot of things. And for once, I'm the one affected, at least most recently. And some people had a lot, I mean, we've had a lot of comments, a lot of people just thankful that I'm doing better and such. And thank you so much for all the outpouring of concern. Mostly, I'm just an old guy who fell down, and uh, sometimes things get infected. I'm doing fine. Don't worry about any of that. We're going to be getting out and walking and doing more outdoor door stuff uh, for all of you soon. I promise I'm really looking forward to getting out and walking again for sure. But there have been some comments and of course people always have questions about healthcare here in Nicaragua and on a beautiful drizzly Sunday afternoon. I think it's a perfect time to sit down and talk a little bit about having some perspective and understanding really what you're kind of looking at or can expect when you're looking at coming and dealing with healthcare here in Nicaragua. So let's get to that right after the bump. Part of what makes healthcare in Nicaragua challenging for North Americans who are coming down, and really, this is true even between like the US and Canada, the healthcare mechanisms here in Nicaragua are just so wildly different than what we're used to. That makes it a little bit difficult for people to understand what's happening, to really wrap your brain around what you're looking at or experiencing or likely to experience or the questions you should ask or how you should be just viewing the entire infrastructure because it's not what you're expecting. And generally, when we grow up in a single country, as most people do, Healthcare is one of those things we just learn by going through it as a child. You know, you get sick, you, you know, need to get shots, you need to, you know, just go through normal checkups, you need to get your teeth cleaned. And over time, you get used to how everything works and you don't think too much of it. And then, of course, as you get like healthcare insurance uh, as through your employer or whatever, uh, as you become an adult, then you they kind of guide you through certain things. And so a lot of what we do with healthcare in, in most places is learned through rote. And that, I mean, that makes sense. Like, of course it is. When you move to a new country, this is a time where it can be pretty challenging. If you move from the US to Canada, there's a ton of questions. People have no idea how to handle working with a new healthcare system, even between countries that generally are pretty similar in a lot of ways and a lot of cultural uh, similarities. But when you move to someplace like Nicaragua, the leap is even bigger. I think for Canadians, it's a little bit easier coming to Nicaragua, but maybe that's not true being an American. It's I'm just hypothesizing. But some important things that are different. And one of the things that brings this up is Someone made the comment because we're often raving about the fact that Nicaragua has free universal health care, which is a complete shift from places like the United States. But it's important to understand some context about it. He said, uh, you know, I got to witness the great, and he's very facetious about it, yeah, free universal health care in Nicaragua when a friend got appendicitis here and had to deal with that through the system. And uh, you can tell from the tone that he's not super impressed with the free universal health care. And of course, course, I think there needs to be some expectation settings around what that means. So there's a reason that we're excited about it. The reason that we're excited about Nicaragua having free universal health care is that it has free universal health care. That on its own is great point blank. There's no exception to those words being an amazing thing because the United States and several other leading countries, but the United States especially, does not have this. So there's no comparison past this point, period. This is the baseline for what good healthcare can be. If you cannot check has for universal healthcare, you cannot state we have adequate healthcare, period. Free universal healthcare alone is not enough. You still need it to be of a certain quality. You still need certain services. That is, that's fine. But there's no way to say something that isn't free universal health care competes with something that is. That's a bar that when you fall below it, you don't have health care. You have partial health care, maybe. And that's a really, really important piece of thought process, right? There's no barrier to getting care here. Now, Nicaragua as hopefully people know, is a very poor country. This makes the fact that there is free universal health care so much more important. There isn't a fallback on private money, right? The United States pushes through 
by nearly everyone being rich enough to somehow manage to pay for their health care. I've never met an American that can get all the health care they need. Everybody cuts corners with their health care because it's so expensive. Everyone knows how risky it is to their financial well-being, which in turn puts their health care at risk. So everybody cuts corners because they, they don't know where to take risks well with their health care. Everyone, even if you make millions of dollars a year, you do not make enough to have the comfort that comes with living in a place like Nicaragua. So that's really important that the United States uses wealth as a crutch to proxy having broadly available health care. And for the most part, it is broadly available, but it is not the same. That's very important. But when we're looking at Nicaragua, we have to remember this is a very poor country. So the resources for this free universal health care are extremely limited. And it should be completely mind-blowing that Nicaragua is capable of providing on a continuous basis this health care and has done so for decades. Given how few financial resources they have to work with, this is amazing what they're able to do. It's also important to remember that they're coming out of all kinds of problems in the past and moving forward. This is a country that's just being built, right? The current government has only been in place, current meaning where Nicaragua is self-governing for 45 years. That is not very long to build a medical infrastructure and processes and rules and payment mechanisms and all those things. So that's stuff that's still happening. That's not enough time for things to have happened yet in many cases. So when we're looking at places like Leon or We Willy, that have brand new hospitals just opening now or have just opened recently, these are really big deals that the country is putting in massive new medical infrastructure currently, taking the worst parts of the country and upgrading them significantly. Like This is really a big deal that that struggling universal healthcare system is getting big upgrades. So yes, it certainly had problems in the past. Yes, it's certainly very limited today. Yes, it is not the thing you're going to want to optionally use if you have other options. Hopefully that's obvious, but I know that for some people it's not. And I know there are some people who are like, I don't care what I have to do. If it's free, I'm taking advantage of it. Okay, so yeah, but that, I think that there is this easy mental place where we say, oh, well, my health care in the United States is so much more elegant or whatever, right? There's this feeling you go into an American hospital and it tends to be bright and beautiful and modern and it has all these things that give you a facade that makes you feel really good about the hospital because Americans they prioritize heavily the the look and feel of the hospital. And that has value. And it's not all bad. And American hospitals are often made very, very well. But there's a huge amount of effort that goes into the appearance of the hospital. And much less that goes into the services of that hospital. It's all about what it looks like and not what it really does. And I would just watch this amazing video this morning talking about the facades of the American suburban home and how so many aspects of American home design is based on mimicking real systems but not being real anymore. Things like vinyl siding that is that is all all shaped and everything to make it look like old-fashioned clapboards and attics that aren't really functional and fireplaces that aren't really fireplaces and chimneys that aren't really chimneys and shutters that don't actually shutter and fake rock on top of really functional concrete. So underneath you have a really functional home designed quite well, made to look like one that doesn't because people just want the weird facade for some reason. Americans love facades. Everyone does everywhere to some degree, but Americans specifically have a culture of facades in nearly everything in life. That's how American politics operates. That's how American education operates. That's how house building operates. And that is how healthcare operates in the United States. And learning that Americans have an addiction to the facade of things, that they care more about what it appears like on the outside than what is actually on the inside is a really important thing to internalize. But if you look back at things like the Puritans, that was their mantra. Everything was how you appeared to your neighbors. And that kind of social structure made its way into everything in America. It doesn't matter what happens for real. It only matters what your neighbors think are going to happen. So we see that in healthcare. So there's this big push for it to look really good. 
So a lot of times when Americans come to Nicaragua and they see the hospitals, yeah, the hospitals are dark. They're often dingy. They're, there's completely different aesthetics. There's no facade. There's no extra things. There's nothing to make you comfortable when you don't need to be. Everything's about providing health care and nothing else. That is not what Americans are expecting. It's not what they want. And so that often is very off-putting. But the actual quality of care is actually quite often quite good. And very often we have discussions with Nicaraguan doctors and they are absolutely appalled, not only by what happens in the United States, but by what is legal in the United States. We had some really good discussions recently and they were just, they were unbelievably flabbergasted by things. They didn't believe stories of healthcare, normal healthcare in the United States, things that they said if they were to do the same thing here, if doctors were to behave that way in Nicaragua, the end of their shift, they'd be met by police. It is a crime for a doctor to be so unprofessional, so non-medical no, non to prioritize money or prioritize free time or something over saving the lives of patients. Those are things they're not allowed to do here. They're given very strict rules as doctors. They have to, they have to honor the Hippocratic Oath. And in the United States, that is totally ignored. And so, or, or in business of, of things. Obviously, there's great doctors in the United States who don't ignore that as well. But it's not the mechanisms of the American medical system creating that need. There's no legal framework pressuring them to do that. But here, they absolutely have to do that. And so, there's a completely different mindset and, and everything about healthcare. And one of the great things here, even with that free universal healthcare, when we talk to Canadians, for example, they say, yeah, the Canadian hospitals are so nice. There's so many resources. And, and you know, there's going to be exceptions where they have things that we don't have here in Nicaragua. Allison's Journey is a great example where she had a very unique situation and they just didn't have the facilities here beyond acute care. And she needed to get back to Canada where she had not just hospitals with specific expertise, but also community support system and such, because uh, ongoing illnesses are not things you want to deal with without your family around, of course. And uh, But in general, you know, Canadians who come here are, are shocked to learn that they can go straight to the hospital. They don't have to get on waiting lists. There aren't waiting lists. Just, you know, and, and that you can talk to your doctor. Even when you're dealing with public hospitals, you can also often text your doctor after you've gone home. Hey, I have these symptoms. You're directly talking to your doctor because your doctor maintains care. It's not just, oh, you got to contact a facility, switch to a clinic. You got to have, you know, pay by the hour to speak to them. No, it's a completely different thing. They're actually here to heal you. That's their job. It is so different. But yes, when you're dealing with the, the free healthcare, the public system, you're talking about the absolute poorest country on the continent, on the entirety of the Americas, trying to keep the poorest parts of their, their society healthy. And so you're going to be in a very minimal environment. If they're going to be doing as little as they can. Nothing is going to be decorated for you. Nothing is going to be extra lit for you. Nothing's going to be designed to make you feel warm and fuzzy. It is designed purely to move as many people through and keep them healthy as possible. It still means providing health care, keeping you healthy, doing what you need to do. But it is not going to feel like some great system until you actually evaluate how long did you have to wait? How much did you have to pay? Did you actually get the health care? And neither the US nor Canada has anything to compete with it because in Canada you have these long waits and, and I mean insane waits that are often killing people, destroying lives because there just aren't the resources and they don't have a mandate to take care of people now, Nicaragua does whatever it takes to get that done. And in the United States, we don't have a system that's free and, and universal, period, just period. It doesn't exist. So the U.S. and Canada are not in the game here. When you want to then get away from this, you're like, well, but that's not what I want. I love that they do that for other people, which should be your reaction, right? That is so awesome that the Nicaraguan people have this to fall back on and that it's open to everyone, even tourists and residents and, and citizens, like everybody can take advantage of this. They don't ask for your ID when you go to the hospital or they want to know who you are, obviously, but you don't need to produce some specific ID. Anyone can go. And there's, everyone's the same. And it's just, it's fantastic for what it is. I'm not going to go do that if I can help it, but it's really important that it exists. And so you have, to, you have to keep this context that it is a thing that the other countries we're talking about don't offer. Now, if you're going to Italy and France and Spain and Greece, places with mind-blowingly good 
healthcare systems that are free and universal, and they have wealthy populations that are able to put tons of money into it, you know what? Most Americans are still not happy because it doesn't have this huge facade in most cases to make the American, but it's still more of a facade than here. And you'll get more modern machines. They'll feel, they'll, they'll tend to be, yeah, those are better for sure. Those are some of the world's best with deep resources, really deep pockets, huge investments in their medical infrastructure. Nicaragua would love to get there. They just don't have the financial resources to do so. Hopefully in the future they can. But competing against countries in the region, Nicaragua is incredibly impressive in this area. Is it the best healthcare you're going to get? No, they're not number one. But it is a very competitive healthcare environment and that they're doing it on the lowest budget is the truly amazing thing there. Now, I do want to point out just the other day. So I told people, especially in Leon, don't use the public hospital until the new hospital is open. The old one is so bad. Like we're the worst in the country as far as I know. There's a reason why we're getting the flagship hospital. And Jimmy had an accident and slid and he, he hit his foot against uh, galvanized roofing material and sliced up his foot and got needed to get stitches. And uh, they took him straight into a car and ran out and he didn't take a wallet. So he had no ID, no credit cards, no nothing. And they didn't know what to do. And so they just took him to the public hospital, which thankfully stitched him up at the hospital and everything was fine. Now, what should they have done? One, they should not have gotten in a car. They should have called the local doctor. She would have run right over to the house. Someone could have gone upstairs and gotten his wallet. They could have paid her the next day. Any number of things could have been done. There are ways to deal with these things. Unfortunately, not a single person anywhere knew anything about the local doctor for some reason or that there was a clinic in town. And I admit we didn't know either. So you can't fault everyone, but somehow there was a local doctor that we all didn't know right on the main road that everyone's been driving by all the time. And some of the locals knew, uh, but not not the ones that were there at the time. So uh, even though there, it was a local that took him, they didn't know that there was a local doctor. So the thing that should have happened was having the doctor come to the house and she would have stitched him up right there. And it would have been no problem and everything would have been great. Secondary option, they should have taken him to the local clinic, which was just two minutes away, gotten him taken care of there. Instead, they bypassed the free Sutiava Hospital ER room, uh, which would have been better. And they went on and he wanted to go to Amoxa. He knew to go to Amoxa, which is the private hospital here, which they've always been really good but he didn't have a wallet, so they took him to the main public hospital. I don't know why they bypassed the Sutiava hospital too. So they had a paid clinic that would have been great and a free public hospital that they passed and went all the way to the, the really bad hospital. Um, and then they gave him stitches. And it was, you know, that part was good. They took care of the stitches, it was free, done. But they didn't give him a treatment plan. We have no idea what happened. We don't know if like there was a language barrier or we have no idea what went wrong. But he didn't come out with a treatment plan. And so he was stitched, but they didn't put him on, on medicine or anything. That's definitely going to be a challenge if you go to the public hospitals. Make sure someone is there uh, with you that speaks English or well, speaks English for you, but speaks Spanish well enough that you're not having huge gaps because Everyone's like, no, they just didn't do anything. But there's a very high chance that there was a language barrier problem at the hospital. But so that was his experience with the public health care just recently. But we uh, and I should mention my issue that has caused all of this did happen at a public hospital. Uh, but I was not the one being treated. I just happened to be the one that fell down. Uh, but the um, I have been involved with people using the public health care system uh, rather extensively here in Nicaragua. And, you know, it's it's really important that you have this context of, yeah, every time I go, I'm always like, whoa, it's so dark. It's so dingy. It's so mayhem. It's not this pleasant experience. I mean, not like going to the hospital in the U.S. is a pleasant experience, but it it a lot is done to make it feel that way. Um, and then you have to go through really long waits and, and super expensive and you're always terrified that they're going to bill you for things that they didn't do. So it's never actually pleasant or, or feel safe and it, it's very unhealthy in so many ways. Um, and, and once you get past the, the mayhem of the system and the confusion and most of that is just a cultural thing and, and actually see the care that people are getting, it's, it's very encouraging here. And the fact that people go for everything. In the United States, you don't go to the hospital for every little thing, but 
literally people we know here will go to the hospital when they have the sniffles. They'll go if they're, you know, having an asthma attack. They'll go if they're feeling the flu coming on. They'll go if they've hurt themselves. Like they really do go for everything because everything is free. They go for everything. And sometimes they go to the hospital. Sometimes they use the little community clinics, which are like extensions of the hospital. But because it's free, they're able to use it in a way that we would never have. And we don't have urgent care facilities because you don't need them. Just go to the hospitals for everything. And so everything's wrapped into this one mechanism and it makes using real doctors with real equipment really easy. So that's what people do. There's all this changing of context in your mind of how things work. It really does help you see why they're so busy and why they're so important and why people are using them the way that they do. But for most of you as expats, probably coming to Nicaragua, whether you're gonna be a tourist or you want to live here permanently, chances are you're going to want to use part of the private healthcare system, which is very excellent here. There's a large private uh, mechanism of many different vendors available throughout the country. Most is incredibly cheap, and I've talked about this a bit. I use a Moxa here in Leon. They're also up in Chinandega. There's just the two hospitals, as far as I know. Uh, but it's great. There's two regional hospitals. They cover all of uh, Nicaragua Occidental or Western, Western Nicaragua. And, uh, you know, I went in, I'm able to get an x-ray 15 minutes total. That's not my wait time. That's my total time from the time I walked in the door until I walked out with my x-rays in my hand. $20. I have a private nurse that comes to my house and deals with my knee. $16. Um, I have had house calls from doctors where they came with full equipment and a nurse. Uh, you know, it was $80. That was when when Kat hurt her back a couple years ago, right? It, it the idea that you can have doctors come to your house for so little more money and it, you know an ambulance i think generally you're expected to pay thirty dollars um, but you don't have to it's free if you if you can't uh, at least in our experience um, but certainly pay when you can everything is so cheap everything is so easy everything is so professional and the quality of care that we've gotten and of course there's things that are going to be more than they can handle in the regional cities and so you go into Managua for those things and then you have choices of you know smaller private hospitals that are the equivalent to Amoxa there and you also have the choice of the really amazing ones like Militar and Vivian Pellis and uh, Baptist and uh, there's others I'm very bad at knowing all the hospitals but there's actually many hospitals in in Managua that are very good and many clinics and a lot of times you'll just go to clinics or doctor's offices um, if you're dealing with like oncology or something like that you're not likely to actually be doing it in the hospital or not most of the time uh, for example although the public hospital here is getting the new oncology center and all that as well and even those places are very affordable even if you don't have insurance and it, I've not actually known anyone for whom insurance has been beneficial, but in theory, you can you can get uh, insurance for those things. With Vivian Pellis, people often mention insurance. What they're actually talking about under normal circumstances is a discount program, which is a little bit different. They just expect you're going to use the hospital a certain amount, so you pay monthly or whatever, and you get a discount. I don't have all the details because we don't have it yet. Uh, we probably will at some point because it is a good thing to have if you're getting older, like we are. So... Um, uh, but uh, MapFree is here in the country, and I know at uh, Paseo Real here, they have an office for insurance, so that's something that um, you could look into. They're a major global insurer uh, that I think has a good reputation. I'm really not into that space very much, so don't take my word for it, but I assume. Um, <laughs> I remember them being all over the place when we were in Spain, and uh, they sponsored, I feel like, oh, they had an office right next to the park that I love so much in Lanjaron, my favorite village in Spain. Uh, so you have these options and it's important when people are like, oh, the universal healthcare system isn't that great. No, it's not that great. Not when you're comparing it to things you're paying for in the United States. So if you're going in for, let's say, an appendectomy like I've done in the United States. And now, first of all, I want to point out when I did an appendectomy in the United States, they tried to kill me. And I mean, they tried to kill me. I knew I had a bursting appendix. There is no reasonable place in this universe where my doctor didn't know that I had a bursting appendix. I told him my appendix was bursting. I described the symptoms, which were exactly what is your appendix about to burst, and he ignored me and sent me home. He filled me full of painkillers and sent me home to die. My appendix burst. I was rushed back to the hospital the next day. Them realizing that we had proof of malpractice, they rushed me straight into surgery, and I have a massive scar where they had to cut through my diaphragm, and I can still feel it now 25 years later, but I'm fine. But they literally sent me home to die. 
So the story that the person was saying, oh, they've seen how great the healthcare is here when their friend had an appendectomy. I didn't get the story of whether or not his friend lived or not, but if he lived, it was probably better than my story with an appendectomy in the United States. But my appendectomy in the United States cost something like, this is a long time ago, $50,000. Now, luckily we had insurance, we didn't pay for all of that out of pocket, but it was a very, very expensive thing, and I still had to do it in a relatively dingy hospital that I would never recommend someone go to. Here in Nicaragua, if I go to the public system, not my first choice, but I would get that appendix out for free. Yes, people would complain about it. But if I want to pay for it privately, like I had to do in the United States, to have an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, I expect that I would only pay a few thousand dollars in today's money, maybe two or three thousand. I may be off a little bit, might be a little bit more, but it's not going to be a large amount of money. Having an appendectomy here privately is not a scary financial burden. It would be for a Nicaraguan who's working on, you know, minimum wage or something. That's why they have the public health system. But for anyone who's able to afford going to private, things like that are not things you would ever consider using the, the public hospital for. You can so easily pay for that surgery directly. You can choose which hospital you want to be at. You can choose all the details. You can pay for a private room you can have catered food, all things I couldn't have in the United States, I'm sure somewhere, but not in our local hospitals the way that we can here. It's completely different. And so when you're doing apples to apples, suddenly you're in much more beautiful hospitals here with better food and better care and better doctors and better facilities and better bedside manner and better long-term care and actually following up and actually trying to keep you healthy and never a fear of getting falsely billed for something that you didn't do or having some ability to get your ID. And even though you were just visiting someone in the hospital that they're going to bill you as if you had surgery, real things that happen. Completely different experience. And, and so when you're, when you're comparing, yes, if you're going to compare actually spending $100,000 in the U.S. to free in Nicaragua and then say, oh, well, that, you know, ignoring the fact that it cost you $100,000 in the U.S. and they may not have done a very good job and they're not really under a mandate to. And then looking at Nicaragua and saying, well, it was free, but it was dingy. Right. Or they didn't have a lot. They're not great on painkillers. Right. Some of that stuff's not perfect. And you have to, you know, your family has to bring you food. They don't feed you in the hospital, in the public hospital. They take care of your health care. They don't take care of your food. There's a lot of things they are like you need some family support. And that's unfortunate. But what else are they going to do? Like there has to be limits or else people are going to be going to the hospital just to get fed when it's free and universal. You run into some weird problems. So they have to do some of these things. And yeah, that's that's not great. But. When you're, you you got to really keep the context. You have to understand what it is you're really looking at. And when you, when you really think of it that way, say, okay, this is an entire scope of things that the, like the United States doesn't have. And then when you do pay, you pay a fraction of what you pay in the U.S. And the care you get is so worlds beyond. Wow. So no matter which side you look at, if you're comparing apples to apples, okay, Nicaragua is blowing the U.S. out of the water in quality of care and cost of care, or in apples to oranges, Nicaragua has an orange. The U.S. doesn't even have an orange. In both circumstances, Nicaragua is winning in healthcare in that situation. Now, you want to compare them to Colombia? You want to compare them to Brazil or Mexico? Different ballgame. Then we have different comparisons to make, and I don't know all the healthcare of all the countries. But I know when we compare to the U.S. and Canada and to the U.K., that consistently Nicaragua is winning by such a margin from all those countries. People want to be here when we have healthcare concerns. All my stuff with my knee, so glad it happened here. If this happened in the US, super costly, all kinds of problems. I would constantly have to be going to the hospital or staying in the hospital over something stupid, like a sliced up knee. Here, my nurse comes to the house, everything is taken care of. It is so non-intrusive in my life like this. I'm able to, I mean, it's still kind of intrusive, this is a quality of care I've never experienced in the United States. Every single thing we have happen here is a thank goodness this would be so awful in the United States. The care would be so awful. The cost would be so awful. The fears we would have would be so awful. The intrusiveness in our lives, the amount of time we'd have to put in, the waiting in the hospitals. We don't wait in hospitals here. We show up and doctors take care of you. And they don't shuffle you off to, well, we're going to have some nurses and some tech staff, and eventually a doctor's going to swing through and sign off. No, the doctors actually do the medicine here. It is so different. It's hard to describe 
Americans don't like to believe the importance of actual health care and the lack of importance of facade around it. But that is, that is a really important piece that, yeah, they're not going to keep up the facade for you here. They are going to keep you healthy to a degree you're not used to. So that's my take on having lived here. I am very defensive of people saying negative things about keeping Nicaraguans alive because no one else is going to. And being negative about a level of health care that the United States can't provide at all for free to the people who are most disadvantaged. Yeah, I wish it was better. I wish that their hospitals were brighter and cleaner and the beds were comfier and that delicious catered food was available in, in utter abundance. But there's a practical limit to what, you know, I wish the whole world was lollipops and candy canes, but we can't just magically do that. But within the realm of reason, within what money can actually do and what resources could actually be produced, it is so incredible what a good job is being done and how much is being provided that we have to look at it from that context. And then as, as expats who want to live here, we have so much access and we have this fallback of the same system, of the public system, but we have access to this amazing private healthcare system as well. Plus, you know, we have the flexibility to travel to other countries and take advantage of those as well, but that's yet another step. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.